join in, but I think we're going to just get started now. Just want to thank everybody for taking time to, to come join this webinar and, and hopefully it's, it's very informative and, and, you know, you can learn something here. Um, we are doing a follow-up uh, workshop in March. Um, so we will be following up with an invite for that. If you or some members of your team would like to attend, um, that will be on March 18th. And we'll follow up uh, probably next week with information on that if, if you do want to sign up for that and, and go a little more in depth with some of the stuff that that you're going to, you know, kind of get a you know, high level overview on this webinar. So um, my name is Nathan Jager. I'm the marketing manager here at Echo Store. Um, so today, uh, you know, obviously this is an automating NetApp with Ansible Automation webinar. We have from Red Hat, George James. Uh, Global Partner Solutions Architect from NetApp. We have Jackie Ben Bassett, uh, who's the GSI Technical Alliance Manager. Um, you'll hear from those guys uh, throughout the webinar, um, but I'm going to first pass it over to Daniel Clydesdale Cotter from Echo Store, who is our field CTO. So without further ado, go on ahead, Daniel. Thanks, Nate. <clears throat> so I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes introducing Echo Store um, to anyone on the phone that uh, doesn't know us. Um, at Echo Store, we work with our customers to help get the most from their technology solutions. Uh, we do this through partnerships with leading technology providers in data storage, management, virtualization, uh, platform ops, DevOps, and enterprise service management. Really, our goal is to provide our customers with as much value as possible through the life cycle of their technology solutions and purchases. We do this um, by leveraging our proven track record in design and implementation, services and consulting. Um, and George, if you could move the slide on, um, we'll just build out this second slide. Echo Store really wants to walk with our customers through their IT enterprise journey. So today, we're actually gonna focus on the lower half of the diagram here with Red Hat and NetApp uh, presenting their automation and integration capabilities to create automation platforms. So at Echo Store, we, we really believe that automation is a key component of platform operations and DevOps. Um, the ability to provide repeatable operations uh, for core infrastructure creates powerful connections between the, the pillars of your IT enterprise. Um, the goal of you know, day two operations, lifecycle management of code defined immutable infrastructure is only really possible with a platform to host your automation journey on. Um, as Nate mentioned, um, you know, that in, a, in a few weeks, there's gonna be a follow-up with a workshop. So if there's anything in here that you see and um, that you wanna see live um, in a demo environment, uh, please sign up for that and, and obviously reach out to Nathan um, or your Echo Store sales representative um, uh, to get on that. So now I'll, I'll hand over to George and Jackie to talk through how Red Hat and NetApp are, are making this type of automation platform possible for, for you in your environment. All right. Uh, thank you, Daniel. So my name is George James and I'm a global partner solutions architect at Red Hat. And before working at Red Hat, I was a network engineer at a large financial services company where I worked on deploying and maintaining networks across the US. So with that, let's jump into the Red Hat portfolio. So this is the Red Hat portfolio and it's divided into three pillars. The third is where we'll focus today, management and automation. And we're gonna show how easily and seamlessly uh, we can automate across hybrid environments. Automation happens when one person meets a problem they never want to solve again. So this is one of our cornerstone sta statements and to illustrate it, I like to tell the story of Scott. Scott was a network engineer that I worked with for a really long time, for 20 years. And he's a real person. Um, and he was the one to solve every major issue. So if now that he's solved that one issue for one server, for one network, how do we duplicate that knowledge? We use automation to replicate that success. And before we get into Ansible itself, uh, I want to talk about automation in general. Why do we even automate? So I'll touch on a few of these points. 
When we think of automation, uh, we think of speed of ex execution. We can hit those thousand devices quickly and with minimal engineer time. But there are many other benefits. So we have standardization and compliance. And I often say standardization begets automation and automation begets standardization. How many times have we seen a snowflake environment that is difficult to troubleshoot? You know, take networking, for example. We have uh, standardized configs make it much easier to troubleshoot. Our level one, two, and three support will know exactly what they're looking at. Automation also makes showing compliance easier when you treat your infrastructure as code. So I once gave an Ansible webinar where someone couldn't attend because they were, and in quotes, busy patching servers. So automation would have allowed him to innovate, right? Instead of spending his time fixing problems. When your people are not putting out fires all day, they can spend time, you know, spend time patching, et cetera. They can spend the energy developing ways to improve the organization. Reduction of errors. So even Scott can fat finger a change at two in the morning. Automation helps prevent that. Reduction in costs. We often think of reduction in terms of headcount, but that's not what we're saying. We're saying increase the value of what your people are doing today. Automate the mundane tasks so they can provide better value to your organization. We can decrease security vulnerabilities. So it's nice we can use automation to make changes, but what if we can use automation to scan our environment and react to problems and make changes as needed? So now we know why we should automate, but why Ansible? So put simply, the Red Hat Ansible automation platform allows you to easily and seamlessly manage and automate across hybrid environments. And to accomplish this, Ansible has three core concepts. Simple means accessible. So I was a network engineer for many years. I'm not a developer. And when I originally looked at automation, I knew I needed something that was accessible to me and anyone on my team. Since Ansible is human readable, anybody that understands the technology that they're automating should not have any issues learning how to use Ansible to accomplish what they need to do. This means no special coding skills are required, but simple doesn't mean it isn't powerful. Underneath that human readable format, we have Python for Unix environments. We have PowerShell for automating windows. Ansible is also agentless. It does not stall any additional software on the systems it automates. This reduces vulnerabilities and lets you begin automating today against your existing environment. So, so I just wanted to show how simple yet powerful Ansible can be. This is an Ansible playbook that has one task. And as you probably guessed, this playbook will update all the packages on all my RHEL hosts. Okay, so Ansible sounds great, but why do I need an entire automation platform? So even if your whole organization is automating, the problem can be that they are not working together. So great, we're automating. Uh, and I'll be, be <laughs> I will be biased here, uh, but let's say your network team can provision a new VLAN and an open up a firewall port from a service now request in 30 minutes. However, the server team takes three days to provision a, a VM. So instead of pointing fingers, let's use the benefits of the automation platform to provision the server as well. So in the next few slides, uh, we'll look at how AMP Ansible accomplishes this. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So Ansible is cross-platform. It's not specific to any one vendor or even class of products. It's human readable, as I mentioned. Uh, I like to say it's manager readable. If I'm writing a playbook and my manager comes and looks over my shoulder, they can easily understand what it is I'm trying to accomplish. It's a perfect description. Since Ansible describes a desired state, it becomes the documentation for your infrastructure. It's also version controlled. So we recommend using a version control system such as Git or Bitbucket to track all the changes to your Ansible playbooks. This was a large conversation on its own and usually part of a digital transformation. Dynamic inventories. Ansible can use an outside source of truth, such as a database or a cloud environment to dynamically update its inventories. And finally, orchestration. Uh, in the next few slides, we'll take a look at how Ansible doesn't just automate against these systems separately. So the Ansible automation platform goes beyond the standard configuration management offered by other tools and gives IT organizations the ability to automate the deployment and management of its entire IT footprint. 
You know, for instance, we can use ServiceNow to kick off an Ansible job in Tower that will go out and retrieve information from your IP management tool, use that to provision a VM, upgrade its OS, install a service, open a firewall, and then update and close the ServiceNow ticket. And you can go to ansible.com and see the thousands of modules from hundreds of vendors that we can automate. As I mentioned, Ansible is agentless, uh, and that provides enablement for a wide variety of platforms that make it easy for them to be automated. And these are just a few of the systems we can automate. Okay, so let's look at, take a look at the architecture of the automation platform and what it does. And I know this is a bit of an eye chart, but if you look at the center uh, in the green, you will see Ansible engine. And this is the core of Ansible. And this is with one command in Linux, you can go download this today and start automating. And in fact, this is how I started. I installed Ansible in a VM, I spun up a lab with some network gear, and I was running Ansible playbooks with very little work. Above that, we have Ansible Tower. And simply Tower is the orchestration tool for Ansible. To the right, we have cloud.redhat.com. And this is where you access the automation hub, analytics, or the services catalog. And next we'll take a closer look at Ansible Tower and then an overview of the features that cloud.redhat.com provides. As I said, Tower is the orchestration tool for Ansible. It's the web interface that takes the power of Ansible and gives it to anyone. The Ansible consumer won't be required to know how to write a playbook in order to get the benefits of Ansible. In fact, you can't even look at the contents of a playbook in Ansible Tower. It has role-based access, contr access control, so anyone outside your IT organization can be given rights to run a playbook. For example, HR can run a playbook to create accounts for a new hire, or your network operations center can run powerful reconnaissance playbooks without having to give them admin rights to critical systems. Job scheduling allows unattended playbooks to run without intervention. Powerful work, workflows allow you to configure a sequence of disparate jobs into one manageable unit. Surveys allow you to qu query the user for data without having to have them have prior knowledge of Ansible or the systems that they're automating. Tower also includes a powerful RESTful API for integration with other tools. Next. So next let's talk about collections. And you know, the Ansible community is great. It's how I learned, but you don't always know if their content is accurate or up to date or even supported. And collections help solve that. They allow our software partners to work with Red Hat to certify their Ansible modules and provide example playbooks that are supported. The partner has tested them, Red Hat has tested them. You will know they work and you will get support if you need it. So Ansible is now moving to decouple the modules from the core Ansible engine. So this will allow partners in the community to build, test, and publish content at any time without having to wait for it to be included in the actual Ansible release. So Ansible Galaxy, galaxy.ansible.com is the de facto place for community content, while the automation hub is the place for certified content. I mentioned the services catalog earlier, and this is designed to be a familiar experience providing an easy and intuitive user interface for ordering products. The idea is that those using the automation services catalog may not know that they are ordering, what they're ordering is actually Ansible. For example, a product could be a business function like ordering a new OpenShift project or onboarding a user to a new platform. In order to automate across your organization, you're going to need data. And automation analytics gives you the data you will need to make informed decisions. This information is collected in the cloud by Red Hat, but it's only available to you and your organization. Analytics allows a customer to see Ansible consumption across an enterprise. If one department starts producing Ansible job templates and shares them across the company, that usage data can be aggregated and presented in a visual format to show trends over time. So what we saw with several large customers was that they wanted to enable 
they wanted to be able to measure success and we're starting to aggregate this data manually anyway. So we wanted to make this process more turnkey and easy for all customers to give them the ability to measure success. So at the end of the day, any org is gonna to have to justify the cost of a new product. And so we like to show Ansi how Ansible can pay for itself in a short time. As you can see, Ansible can provide considerable savings to your organization. This slide shows some more data on how Ansible Automation Platform can save your organization time and money. And with that, I will hand off to NetApp uh, to speak more sp uh, specifically about their Ansible integrations. Great, George, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jacob Basat. I'm from NetApp, uh, the Technical Alliance Manager within our Pathways organizations uh, covering um, Red Hat. And uh, ultimately, our team is focusing on uh, field engagement, helping customers and partners. In the next few slides, so you heard already from Daniel about EchoStore capabilities and the services that they can help with, from George about Ansible in general. And I will cover here specifically of course, about the NetApp capabilities, what we do with Ansible, and a lot about the experience and what we hear and see from customers, how they're using Ansible in conjunction with the NetApp storage and data services. So to start with, um, it's really kind of a, why NetApp? What can we do with, with Ansible? And what is our approach to Ansible in general? So this slide captures that well. Uh, we'll start with, um, that it's very easy to start with NetApp in Ansible. Just because of all the work that we put into Ansible, recognizing the, 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 the power, the capabilities, and what it helps customers with, NetApp recognized that fairly early and invested a lot. We have a brilliant team focusing on that. We work very, very closely with Red Hat to produce uh, and, and publish modules and George just uh, explained about those certified collections and modules that are tested by both companies. Um, it's very uh, nice at NetApp uh, uh, that we can brag and say that we have more modules than any other storage vendor out there, but that's really not important if it's not relevant for our customers. Uh, it's only important if those modules bring value to our customers, and indeed they do. Uh, if you look at the frame at the bottom, um, most of our customers uh, see that they can do 100% of their operations when it comes to storage and data management in the context of NetApp's technology with the existing modules that we have put together, we've published. So that makes it extremely easy to start with NetApp. Uh, we also have a lot of resources to help customers with and, and, and our partners, uh, blogs that uh, you will see a little bit resources in the end that uh, we can point you to. So fairly easy to start and very quickly cover a lot in the domain of storage and data management uh, within our technologies. But of course, customers wants to extend that to beyond the things that uh, George touched upon, more complex workflows, starting with a uh, service now as an example of a service catalog that then calls out through APIs to um, uh, the uh, Ansible automation platform. And from there trigger a lot of automation in, in different workflows. So uh, certainly uh, storage and data management is an important component, component of that. And in order to have those complete end-to-end -end workflows, storage is a, a critical piece. The other uh, um, aspect to point is, is our experience. We have a huge install base. A lot of our customers, including large and complex environments using automation, Ansible automation with NetApp. And they've been uh, um, quite successful from the get-go, implementing that and then uh, extending to uh, simplifying those uh, workflows that at the beginning seem to be extremely complex, but once they're automated, then there's a strong appetite to grow and do more when it comes to automation. Um, and they're just uh, um, indicating some of the, the stats that we're po pointing out there. Um, third of the Red Hat certified Ansible, probably uh, it's not very accurate, it's a few months old, but our um, uh, NetApp uh, modules. So uh, we do a lot with uh, Red Hat when it comes to Ansible. 
um, and, and beyond. And I'm actually involved personally, uh, seeing the, the, the cadence and the collaboration between the two teams. So very strong uh, uh, collaboration that we see specifically around Ansible between the, the companies uh, that ultimately translate to benefits to the customers uh, in the field. And then internally, NetApp is, is very committed to Ansible beyond what we produce and how to help our customers uh, when it comes to our technology in Ansible, um, we're also using it internally. So we practice what we preach, we use it internally. Some of the use cases and the example that uh, uh, George mentioned, we certainly uh, do that internally, whether it's um, workflow starting with HR provisioning an environment for a new employee or provisioning a very complex environment, uh, a cloud-like um, test environment for developers that can, uh, with the click of a button, be provisioned. Uh, the, the developers will do whatever they need to do, and then they can reset the environment and very quickly, thanks to Ansible, thanks to the automation, create a new environment. It saves a lot of time, and we'll get into some of those examples. And uh, we also include Ansible Playbook in some of our support uh, uh, capabilities. We have Active IQ, an AI-driven advisor that helps customer when it comes to supporting NetApp technologies. There's some playbooks that are built in and we are planning to uh, publish more to help with remediation. Uh, for example, uh, a firmware upgrade can be automatically addressed through a built-in playbook that we've already created. So overall as a company, recognizing uh, the, the, the the power, the capabilities of Ansible and automation and, and really being committed to that end-to-end -end, uh, through our company. It's also important to understand that our partnership, our relationship with Red Hat is not specifically to Ansible or a single product. We have um, that across the broad portfolios between the two companies. I'll mention uh, um, the OpenShift container uh, platform. We have a lot of customers that using NetApp technology and Red at OpenShift together. Uh, that's true for Rail, uh, OpenStack, and uh, uh, Red at Virtualization. So between the companies, expertise, resources, executive, a lot of that can be translated to help our customers and our partners. So broader than um, Ansible uh, alone. Uh, I'll move to the next slide, please, uh, George. So a little bit about the modules that um, I explained that we have a lot of and the time-saving benefits. Those are uh, particularly in the domain of, uh, in the storage domain and, and IT operation as part of the infrastructure. The left side talks about our own top product line. The right side is our element. It's a different flavor of our uh, uh, portfolio, of our storage portfolio. It uh, doesn't really matter. You can see, uh, if we're looking at day zero, day one, day two type activities, our existing modules that are certified, and again, these are not just modules that somebody uh, put together and, and wrote and now they're available. Those have been through uh, uh, verification by both companies so that you can get the support that George was referring to on those modules. You can see that when it comes to day one, day two, beyond the initial setup and preparing the storage instances, now day-to-day -day operation, 98 of what is required by our, the majority of our customers are modules already uh, covered. So back to that, it's easy to start with NetApp. And in many cases, we hear from customers that it's overwhelming. How do you start? There are a lot of pockets of automation within infrastructure individually, but the real benefit, the advantage of automation is really to take it to the next level and automate workflow. Simplify that complexity and coordination between a lot of individuals and streamline that automation. The more modules that we have allow um, the, the, the subject matter expert within the storage or servers or applications to really focus their um, knowledge and, and aim that towards how do we simplify that end-to-end -end complex workflows rather than how do I automate specific uh, operational aspect within the storage. There's also uh, potentially some concern about uh, uh, job security. I really don't wanna automate uh, what I do uh, manually, because what will I do then? Um, well, that's not the case. Um, that knowledge those subject matter experts have within the domain of infrastructure and storage, that could be tunneled now to figure out how to put together those sophisticated end-to-end -end workflow that become very simple from end user and business value at the end. 
So that's where the knowledge can uh, uh, come into play. So coverage in terms of modules, we have a lot of modules, obviously, for all those uh, operations. But also, when it translates to time, we can see from uh, customers, um, set of tasks, operations that used to take three days, now we see customers can bring them down to 15 minutes to 10 minutes from two days. Uh, significant time saving end-to-end, um, -end, which of course brings a lot of value, allow those individuals to focus on things that really help propel certain uh, aspects that the business did not get from uh, infrastructure experts before. Okay, um, we can move to the next slide, uh, George. And this is uh, some of the use cases, obviously a long list of uh, example and use cases that um, automation is relevant, also particularly in the context of NetApp. I won't go over all of them, I'll just uh, classify them in terms of uh, categories. There are automation capabilities within the storage specific, just to make the day-to-day -day operation faster, simpler, with less people. Of course, within the storage, that's important. That's what brings uh, organization more value is what we said uh, uh, all along uh, uh, so far, is those complex, the multiple aspects that we bring together into those end-to-end -end workflows. So not just the storage, but how's the storage part of provisioning something that includes a whole infrastructure set so a developer can have the full environment with the application, with the server, with the right networking connection, uh, connection with the proper security in place and the storage and the data so with the click of a button, they can create an environment, not picking up the phone, not opening tickets, or if opening tickets, opening it as a self-service through a platform like ServiceNow, and then everything is done automatically to, to help them. So those are the more complex uh, uh, environment, and there are plenty of uh, use cases where the automation with Ansible in the context of NetApp falls short, maybe we don't have uh, exact uh, module or something that is more complex to do. First, we have generic modules that can help um, with uh, basically writing a certain uh, code that will allow to accommodate for things that we have not uh, uh, provided. But we also have an extensive set of uh, REST APIs that can help with further integration of some of the advanced data management within our storage platforms into other workflow. For example, um, CICD with Jenkins. We can use our API to do things beyond the provisioning of the storage uh, in certain ways. If, uh, when in the context of storage, if the um, Ansible uh, platform itself cannot uh, address that. So Ansible automation, end-to-end, -end, plenty to start with of what we've published, plus those uh, API that uh, um, we have in place. Uh, next slide, please, uh, George. Oh, you guys see what I see? That's uh, images. Sorry, there's a, a problem here. It's blocking the text, but I'll. I'll uh, we have here uh, um, three examples, uh, basically, to talk about those use cases and experiences uh, with our with our customers. The first one is use network, and again, my apologies for uh, messing up here with the slide. The the challenge. Yeah, it's my apologies. I think it was when I converted from PowerPoint to. Google Slides. <laughs> okay, no, I'll be able to talk about it, so it's okay. Hopefully okay. everybody can see the mini clouds. That's kind of a, 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 the key here. That's a, a, a quote from the customer. First of all, I wanna go back to, it's easy to start with NetApp. So the storage automation was not the first thing that um, the customer was automating. There were some silos of uh, automation already in the organization, but it, uh, it seems that it was very overwhelming, extremely challenging to figure out how to bring all those silos of automation into this orchestration, into this end-to-end -end automation workflows. Um, it was surprisingly easy when they started with NetApp and partnering with our account team, helping them um, figure out how to start. And very quickly, they realized that it's not as difficult as they thought, that there's a lot for them to leverage and implement already in the direction that they were thinking and they were interested in uh, um, implementing all that end-to-end -end automation to help their developers with getting a full stack of infrastructure so they can do development. Um, and that's the, the mini cloud environment that can be now provisioned with a click of a button, thanks to Ansible and NetApp technologies. And if you feel that, if some of you on the call feel that 
it's a, a potentially difficult, how do you start? This is exactly where EchoStore can help you figure out, point you and help you connect the dots. And then Ansible and the automation module will kind of do the rest. And we certainly see, and that's what we heard from this customer, that their appetite uh, got bigger and bigger as they saw how successful they get uh, very quickly with uh, um, the, the, the modules that we had in place. So that's uh, one example. And just by the way, also the collaboration here and the integration with the technology is beyond Ansible. We have a good story here also with um, OpenShift and uh, the NetApp Trident persistent storage for uh, containers. The second example is a large financial uh, company based in the US. They had a challenge. So this is a storage specific, but in the context of infrastructure security and showing the, uh, a full audit trail, they needed to automate that. It used to be a manual process for several teams. They have a very large NetApp footprint and it took them um, a lot of time, uh, maybe uh, uh, 40 to 50 hours a week that they were able to reduce significantly thanks to automating everything. And they were not allowed to develop manual scripts because they had to show that nobody's tempered, nobody's modifying those scripts and it's completely locked and in, 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 in order to pass that audit. So um, this is uh, what, what they've done, saved a lot of time and, and uh, were able to focus their resources on other things. So Ansible automation in the context of um, the data and the stored services as part of a, a security audit. The last example, and George touched upon that uh, uh, as well a little bit, is starting with ServiceNow as a self-service catalog, offering all sorts of servicing. Uh, the end user goes to the uh, ServiceNow, they select what they want to do, and then through API calls, it will trigger playbooks uh, that um, the Ansible uh, automation platform uh, is controlling and managing. And that's really the strength of the uh, Ansible platform uh, from Red Hat and it allows that integration and ultimately it's in the it's the heart it's the core of all that uh, automation orchestration end to end endless of uh, possibilities uh, across all business units uh, we gave the example of hr earlier but it's also within specific infrastructure uh, elements uh, um, the server the networking the security the storage uh, obviously uh, and then as you bring them together to a more complex it workflows and then for developers, we see a lot of that. Back to the example of use, um, we use that internally at NetApp and we hear many, many of our customers are using that to really provision those uh, uh, environments for developers very quickly with a click of a button. And it's all start with uh, a simple uh, a service catalog request. And then there's a lot of sophistication that put into those platform, but ultimately translate to that a simplification when it comes to how it's being consumed and how uh, easy it is uh, uh, when it comes to saving time for the customers. So that's uh, um, ultimately uh, the, the three kind of uh, examples that we have. The next slide is just um, if you want to uh, uh, look at some resources that we have within NetApp. And uh, I took some screenshot to show you that um, if you go to Red Hat and you look for those collection, you will see NetApp is published there. Those are the certified uh, um, modules that we have in place. Of course, the uh, Galaxy, the repository for um, our, our content uh, is available as well. We have a very active community that uh, can help with uh, uh, support and questions and ideas, subject matter experts that um, uh, participate, uh, content that we publish. This is all available uh, for you. And if you want to take a screenshot or of course uh, through EchoStore follow up with us and we'll be able to share uh, those details as well. So that's it uh, uh, from me, uh, just giving you a little bit overview of what NetApp can do with Ansible. And of course, there's plenty that um, we can share as needed. All right, awesome. Thanks, thanks, Jackie. Thanks, George. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, we'll give a minute here if anybody wants to put some stuff in the Q&A and, and have, uh, have one of these three guys um, you know, answer your questions on the fly. Uh, or you can you know, reach out to your EchoStore rep or myself um, you know, with any questions you do have, and, you know, I can direct you to the correct resources. Uh, we did have a question come in asking about uh, the recording of this session. That will be available. This was recorded. Uh, we will be putting it on our YouTube channel uh, probably sometime early next week. Um, I put that link to the YouTube channel uh, in that Q&A uh, section, so you can find it there. Additionally, we are going to uh, try to email you out the 
the link to the direct webinar as well. Um, again, expect that uh, early to mid next week. And um, yeah, I just want to, you know, once again, thanks to these three. Uh, I think this was 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 really helpful. And, and again, we are doing a workshop uh, that should be March 18th, about one month from today. It's going to be a three hour session with with NetApp and, and Red Hat. Uh, so look out for that invite that should come next week and, uh, you know, forward that along to, you know, maybe some of your more, you know, you know, the, the right people within your organization, whoever that may be. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I think that that's it. I do have one, uh, one question did come in, um, and this one may be kind of directed towards Jackie, but we did have somebody ask, how often are the NetApp modules reviewed and released? So um, they're being reviewed uh, on a weekly basis and there's a, a meeting between the two companies on a monthly basis, the subject matter experts. In terms of release, we release, um, and maybe George can help me with that, according to the collection uh, release cycle. And that, those are the certified mm -hmm. modules. So uh, George, if you know uh, what's the cycle release of uh, the, the collections, then that's um, the answer for how often. So. I touched on it briefly in, in the presentation. So what Red Hat is doing with Ansible is they're decoupling the modules from Ansible Engine Core. So when you download the Ansible Engine Core, you're gonna get a base set of modules and then you can add a collection from NetApp uh, as needed. So really NetApp will be able to fix uh, bugs, uh, add new functionality uh, at any time. And then you just download the new collection uh, and you're ready to go. You're not tied to a release schedule anymore uh, with Ansible. So instead of having to wait for that module to be included in the next rev, it's just available when you can uh, submit it and get it approved. So, so hopefully it, it makes sense. Uh, uh, back to what I was saying, we're looking at the modules on a regular basis, kind of weekly, mm -hmm. um, but um, we publish uh, a connection basically. Yep. Awesome, thanks guys. I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, so I think we'll just end it here, give everybody 20 minutes back in their day. Once again, um, you know, thanks Jackie, thanks George, thanks Daniel. Um, and uh, like I said, if you do have any questions or wanna follow up with Echo Store, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I think you can just reply to the invite. My email should be on there. Um, and uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing some of you guys at the workshop next, uh, next month. So thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you, everyone.